Kyle here from All Media Reviews. Happy New Year on the Christian calendar, 2024. Here to do a sort of announcement, plans, video blog of some kind. I don't know how long this is going to go because I was just coming up with this stuff over the weekend. Hopefully it won't be that long just to zip through some of this stuff. So I have potentially a lot of plans for stuff to do in 2024. Again, not really that much different than was in December, but... Just to go over it, you know, and post what you're looking forward to music-wise, music, whatever. I'd love to find that out. Thank you for subscribing, if you have subscribed, by the way. Uh, but if you haven't, please subscribe, uh, comment, like. It really helps with, uh, and hit the notification bell. It really helps with YouTube's al algorithm, of course. But, okay, so, um, I have, I'm hitting 10 years on, it's odd as it's been. I've got 589, this will be like the 590th video, um, on YouTube, I'll be hitting 10 years. So that's a lot of videos, I suppose. So I'm planning on doing some kind of stuff for the 10 years. It's in March, like March 11th, I think it was the first video. And the first year on YouTube, I mean, I was still blogging, writing in the blog, and I continued doing that more more prominently than doing uh, YouTube the first few years I had an account. But I didn't do my first video, first couple of videos in 2014. Um, it was a Ben Sinister review, which is weird. It was back in my old apartment, and anyway. I'm, I'm planning on doing something for the 10-year anniversary, um, probably a vinyl, like a contest to get rid of some of these vinyls, get rid of, you know, find new homes for some of these new vi these vinyls I have multiple copies of, um, and I'm also planning on making maybe one or more videos about some of my favorite or as many of my favorite YouTube channels, so... You're out there, <laughs> I apologize for tagging you if you're not expecting it, but... You know, I, it's weird because I had a series of time where I had YouTube channels. I'll talk more about this in those that I used to follow that just stopped. You know, not that they the, the channels they're not active on YouTube anymore. So, so that's number one. Number two, um, I'm going to continue the albums of the year series. I'm working on 1978 right now. I'm close to being ready to do it. Um, unfortunately, it's still requiring a lot of time. It's like between all the stuff I'm trying to listen to. And I'm thinking of potentially doing them a little differently, but I'm divided. It's really, I need to do them down the road in a few years on like a 2.0 Redux. Um, because it would help if I did them through like Rate Your Music on a list. But um, I, I, I'm kind of, I kind of like the idea still of showing the physical copies a little more. I wonder if I could do both. If there would be a way to do both, I'll try to figure it out. But the, the 19, next one, 1978, could be coming in the next few days. Hopefully by the end of this week at least. Um, but there's some other factors in there. So, so number three, I've posted on social media and on like the Dream Theater forums, these album anniversaries, and I thought it, it would be kind of neat to do the, these milestone anniversaries. You could do it every year, of course, but I kind of look at, not to do it every year, but every, every five in five year, you know, increments um dates and i guess in this case since i'm not going to do an album anniversary date or al album anniversary video for every single album that hits a 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 50 55 year anniversary to do one video a month ideally at the beginning of the month it might be more in the middle of the month it, it really depends but try to do that and go over at least the real like significant important albums to me that are celebrating those milestone anniversaries um, so that's another thing I just thought about it. You know, I mean, this is all time permitting. I have time to do all this stuff. Um, the movies of the year, which I mentioned on the prog stream on, you know, the prog corners, prog stream on Sunday. And I, at last summer, I, cause I, they did that special on the, you know, 1982, the greatest year for movies ever, which, you know, I did a video on that, reviewing that and talked about what my favorite years, my favorite movies from 82 were. I made a rate the music list. And I got in the habit of just doing that and just trying to think of all the movies I've seen. I don't own nearly as many. I have a, a DVD collection, like a lot of people, but um, to do the movies of the year. Once I'm finished with the albums of the year, I'm not going to start that, but I made lists, and they're not complete. They're not nearly as complete as, as the albums list. But, again, that might be a 2.0 thing in three to five years, too. I don't know. But I think it would just be fun to do that. It won't be going, well, probably not really going as, not nearly as thoroughly, because that's part of it. I struggle to find many movies that I I like and remember seeing from the 50s and the 60s, other than a few series, like the Marx Brothers and that kind of stuff. That even goes back earlier than that. Um, 
Really not until the 70s and 80s. 80s on, I'm good. I have long lists. So that's something I'm looking forward to. I made the list. They're not obviously complete, but I may just go with those lists that I've got. Uh, and that would... The ETA on that is sometime probably in the summer. Late spring, maybe. It really depends on how, when I can get the the album ones do, albums one done. So... Um, and speaking of movies, um, this is not plans for a year. It is. Yes, it is. I'm, there's some movies I want to see. I am going to be seeing both Shortcomings, which is a Randall Park, Randall Park of Fresh Off the Boat and Young Rock. Um, uh, there's a movie he directed called Shortcomings I want to see that was in the theaters a few months ago and didn't. Uh, it's a sort of a rom-com, um, with some, you know, Asian, Asian American, I don't know. Anyway, it was an indie film I want to see. It looks funny. And then Dream Scenario with Nicolas Cage. Um, that's an A24 movie that's... It's it's not a comedy exactly, I guess, but it got relatively good reviews, but it didn't stay in theaters very long. So um, I don't know if it got any nominations for... It might have for the Golden Globes that are coming up this week and then the, the Academy Awards. It might have gotten something for the Spirit Awards. I don't know, because A24 is big with that. So then, coming up in February, because that's going to be, I can see that any time now, but in February, Orion in the Dark, which is a Charlie Kaufman written screenplay, but it's animated as a movie that's going to be coming on Netflix. I'm looking forward to that. It's directed by the same person who did, like, like How to Train Your Dragon, I guess. So, um, follows Orion, a young boy who is afraid of heights, pets, and rendered nearly catatonic by the worst of all perils, the dark... Of the by the dark, the dark takes Orion on a nighttime trip to prove to the youngster that the only thing to fear is fear itself. Yeah, the dark is the sort of you know not the antagonist, but he's one of the main characters, obviously, because it's called Orion in the Dark. So um, I wonder if they're ever to make that movie. There's a monster in my closet, or there's a nightmare in my closet. I had that book. There was talk about after they did where, did where the wild things are. There was talk about them making that movie in Hollywood. I think it's still been in in like sort of development. Development Hell, you know, but one of the books I had as a kid, one of those kids' books. But So the last kind of right now movie, well, one of the last movies on my agenda is I've wanted to see since finding out about it back in like late September, like August. The Book of Solutions, which is a Michelle Gondry movie, follows a man, a director who tries to vanquish his demons, which are oppressing his creativity. I mean, I'm a big Michelle Gondry fan. Eternal Sunshine, Spotless Mind, I love... Um, uh, Science of Sleep. Absolutely love that movie. But he's not for everyone. He's very um, surrealistic, very kind of dreamy, and he uses kind of animation and stuff with live action. It's And he's French, so a lot of his movies are in subtitles. Um, but, yeah, I know it, 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 it hit some film festivals in September, and I don't know, hopefully it will come either to some theaters here or some of the landmark theaters or something, but... That's on my agenda. It may be a year before I see it. I don't know. So, so there's some other, something else I stumbled on last night with Michel Gondry because he's working on something. And now this is probably not coming out this year. Maybe coming out maybe sometime in 2025. Called Atlantis. And assuming this is correct because this is on IMDb and IMDb, as we came to learn, like some of the stuff with like the Better Call Saul castings and stuff in the episodes, it is still user generated and updated. So. This may be something that's completely, I don't know. It's called Atlantis. The, the, the tagline says, or the description says, a musical inspired by Pharrell Williams' childhood in Virginia Beach. Directed by Michelle Gondry. It stars Andre 3000, um, who I liked, really liked in um, Dispatches from Elsewhere. I've seen him, he, he played Jimi Hendrix. He's a pretty good actor. I mean, obviously people know him from Outkast, and he just released that flute album. But um, as, as Andre 3000, Mary J. Blige, and Missy Elliott, I don't know what kind of... And I guess it's a musical, which I have reservations for the most part about musicals. So I'm curious about this. It could be, a, it could be really good because it is Michelle Gondry, but I can't let my Michelle Gondry fandom and bias you know, ignore objectively what this could be because it also could be complete, you know... Not farce is the right word, but, you know, it's musical, and it's, you know, and with, you know, and I don't mind Mary J. Blige and Missy Elliott. I guess she, I like her performance at the Rock Hall, but um, not my cup of tea necessarily, ideally, for music, but I guess if it's really musical and not, I don't know, it might, I don't know if it's going to be, because Pharrell Williams isn't a, well, he did nerd, but he's no, recently he's been known for just 
his singing and his songwriting as opposed to his, I don't know what nerd was hip hop. I don't know, it might be hip hop, but then again, some hip hop can be good. I don't know. So anyway, um, I just found out about Love on the Spectrum, the um, love, uh, you know, people on the autistic spectrums reality show of some kind, which I got one over by, many people got one over, my wife and I, on Netflix, uh, right at the beginning of pandemic. Um, and the second season on the U.S. version comes January 19th, so I'll probably try and do a review for that if I can. Um, Michael, who I follow on Instagram, the, the, the best part of the Love on Spectrum series, he was in two or three seasons of it. I don't think he's actually involved. I don't know. They didn't show him in the trailer, but he's he's, he's doing stuff, though. I've He's got his podcast, but I think he's like, getting into acting and stuff. But um, so anyway, the other kind of sort of short, long list of of things I can tell about here is some of the music I'm looking forward to investing time in. Well, there's a gentle giant Sunday prog stream coming up on Sunday, and kind of like the the Frank Zappa, you know, topic. While I do have some gentle giant music, and I've listened to some of their music, I'm really not nearly versed enough to really have a, a, that great of a knowledge of them as much as kevin gilbert was a huge fan of them theirs and i have a good friend that loves them and a lot of other bands they influence like echolin spock's beard you name it and i kind of look at them general giant as like this the, the best of the second level of prog bands from the 70s other than i i don't i guess renaissance would be one one above them but i mean and like soft machine i guess to an extent but as a whole i look at general giant as sort of I like them more than Camel. I like them more than Van der Graaff Generator, for sure. I like them more than... Um, I could like them, rather. It's a better way to put it. So, in the next week, I'm going to try to make some sort of investment into trying to take in some of their music so I would feel like it would make sense for me to be on camera for the prog stream. Otherwise, I just feel like I should just be one of the people in the peanut gallery just typing because, well, I have some of the records. I have the first album of Octopus... I have Power and the Glory. I've heard, you know, I know songs like Knots. I still am not that qualified at this point. And even cramming for a week, I almost feel like I don't really necessarily feel... Someone else would be better qualified to, to be chatting. But, you know, if they only get a couple people in there, I'm happy to go on camera and contribute what I can, um, if that makes sense. The same along that line, the Frank Zappa playlist I've been listening to a little bit of like some of it some of it i didn't care that much for but it was with my wife when she was here and i just wasn't focusing that much so i'm going to try to take in that playlist and maybe i'll do a video on zappa um the same along the, along the same lines of that uh todd rundgren i've hooked tud um i know that uh sea tranquility did a video on todd rundgren yesterday they did a live or was it sunday the same before um the prog stream and so i was watching some of that and um, I've always meant to check more Todd Rundgren out. I love the Icon album. That's his Utopia band, of course. Um, I know, you know, I know Bang a Gong, of course. There's certain songs I do know. And he had a relationship with with Hall and Oates specifically. You know, he's gotten the Rock Hall. I know him, but I don't know. I've listened to the album with the flowers. It is like that's like purple and everything. Um, and I, you know, there's a few records I probably owe it myself to try to listen. So he's another artist. You know, and maybe I'll report back to Pete Pardo because he actually commented. He he replied back to me on that on that comment I made. Um, Agent Fresco, if that's if they put out an album, and even not, try to give them another go this year. On paper, I should love them, as I mentioned in the, in the um, the calendar video I made last week. But um, especially if they put out a new album, of course. You know, the same thing could be said about Dirty Loops, and I am already taking in Dirty Loops, and I think it's only a matter of a few weeks or even less. I'll probably try to make a video on Dirty Loops. Um, 10CC, well, I've been really getting more into them doing these albums of the year. They're another band that I'm seeking out their catalog. I forgot to put down Billy Joel on here. Billy Joel's another one. Um, there's a few of them. Billy Joel, America, a lot of these bands, I, I'm i still just kind of becoming vaguely familiar. I want to become more familiar with their catalog. Again, it's a matter of time. Um, and then this band, Another Sky, this gentleman I encountered on Reddit of all places, which I'm, I'm going to start using Reddit maybe a little more. I, I didn't use um, Discord nearly as much until this past year. And so maybe Reddit is the plat the social media platform I invest more time this year. Because I've used Reddit. I've had an account on Reddit for like a decade probably almost. 
Um, but yeah, this gentleman who was looking for ref referrals, um, hogweed something. Thank you for subscribing again. He um, he likes Bent Knee. He was looking for bands to check out, and he mentioned bands he like. They're sort of modern prog of some kind. And Another Sky was the one. We're sort of modern art rock, you know, pro uh, progressive art rock. So Another Sky is another band. They did a Tiny Desk concert. They have a, Their second album comes out in March, um, so that will kind of coincide with that probably. Um, then this band I, I read about mentioned in of all places Prague magazine i was paging through and i was at barnes and noble a couple weeks ago the mystical hot chocolate endeavors which they're a, like a prog metal band which i don't have huge expectation given the fact that they are but their name is intriguing i know the the, the main guy the front man the, the one of the main guys behind the band they're from like pennsylvania i think um i know he had like a it was like a tech death band or something like that he was in a metal band before he formed this band. There's actually a band. So that's what I'm going to get to in a minute. But So I mentioned on the prog stream too that I want to do... And I haven't even really reviewed these. I've only listened to them a couple times. But the thud... I'm gonna, I want to make it my goal. It may be later in the year, like in the fall even, or sometime in the summer. I want to go through every primary track on thud and do a separate short video. And maybe even... I'm, I may even try to put it up on TikTok. Because I have an account on TikTok now. Every track on Thud, every track's history, so the three, four, five plus versions of every song. I'll make it as brief as possible, five minute videos, talking about each one and vaguely what about, what how they differentiate. But it's going to require me to literally listen to each and write stuff down. Um, I did that when I initially got the Thud, you know, twentieth anniversary, but I didn't write everything down. And but so that's another thing. I mean, Kevin Gilbert's estate's going to have more of these KMG, these things, these KMG archives this is number five and six there's supposedly like 11 12 of these things so we're about halfway there and then sh the shaming of the true multi-disc is sort of the the big piece until that a lot of this stuff hopefully will be showing up on the, the streaming services and be able available beyond toy matinee and and thud and um the standard thud and uh energy of all things because we don't have giraffe we don't have you know um the, the nuts and bolts compilation you don't have the shaming of the truth you don't have caviar you don't have any of the call me kai records you don't have any of the live record all that stuff could potentially show up once you know all the physical media has been basically done with the estate which could be 2025 or 2026 at this point because it was supposed to be like this past year so they they pushed it back so um and then yeah, the other big project i have on my hopefully on my um agenda is to try to go through some of these bands that i don't know on all these 2023 albums of the year list it's this isn't new every year during i mean um uh, no it, it was giant sky wasn't wasn't someone's list but mir was one that nathan and shuffle mentioned and i checked them out finally got into them like about a year ago um is it new that i find bands on people's lists the end of the year and get into them so i have some of them down like voyagers new album fearless and love i want to check out uh stuff from my friend annie michael mikhail manny her innermost and karma juggernauts osaka punch haunt the woods ubiquity van vamusari moving forward great white nothing hymns of hungry spirits volume two the new anger album i'm actually going to try to check it out if i get around to it and eyeless owl which i think matt o'leary talked about um, and I haven't even watched a lot of the Albums of the Year videos from, like, uh, uh, Cody's Cody's uh, little stream he did yesterday, some of that stuff, um, Vinyl Bites, um, and um, all, you know, Lorenzo from Alt Parkour has a list. I haven't gone through a lot of his list. Um, there's a couple, I mean, Matt O'Leary just posted his top ten. I haven't gone through all of his list. I, I knew some of it. It's, it's good to see some of that stuff on there, like, Stephen Wilson, I believe, and I think Stephen Wilson on there, um, and uh, he had he had um, Kimono on there, the Minnesota band. So that that's kind of my other project. Hopefully, early in the year, I don't know, but come middle of the year, I don't know if I'm be still looking at some of these lists and trying to get through them. But um, so that's my kind of um, shtick and my my plans. I'm gonna do more of the react to um, Spotify top ten songs and Spotify songs play numbers of course um i may revisit some bands depending on you know when it is even because like i said those numbers get updated and maybe do some more of the i may even do one today um the prog archives react to prog archives um 
is this banned on Prog Archives list? That was a really quick, easy new video format. So, you know, I got a lot of new stuff coming on the channel. Um, you know, am I going to do any writing in the blog? I don't know, you know, but um, a lot of new fun plans to look forward to in 2024, even though it's just another week, really. Like I said, in the, the Jewish calendar, the New Year's in, you know, September, early October. So we've already, we're already like four months in that year, but... Um, um, yeah, so what are you looking forward to in 2024? I'd love to see that. Um, and please uh, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, leave a comment, give it a like, um, and hit the notification bell for to get, you know, anytime you miss a video or anything like that. I mean, of course, I'll post the stuff in um, on the social media as much as I can. And I'm looking to do more collaboration videos. I didn't even mention that. More with that group from the, uh, more the cal the calendars maybe with my friend Christian and then um, maybe like an Albums of the Year update. And then I'm also planning on probably doing some, we want to do uh, Death by Unicorn Brennan, uh, which I just, just celebrated his birthday a couple days ago. Happy belated birthday, Brennan. But um, we want to do like a tier list maybe for um, for Queen and for uh, ELP. That was the next plan. But, you know, he's busy. He's got a kid and everything. And I'm, of course, trying to do all this other stuff. But, um yeah, I mean, more collaborations will probably be, and you know, if we continue doing the prog stream with Scott. Uh, you know, Cody and um, Wayne do a, are starting to do one of their own. They're doing like a a, a Saturday night thing. Um, so I don't know. I mean, at some point, YouTube. I don't want YouTube to take over my life, but I'm trying to do. It's nice to see a little bit of more activity. I think I really owe a lot to talking to Scott and Scott's support. I really, you know, the Prog Corner really has helped me out. I, I want to thank him again for that. Um, and anyone else who's, you know, giving me any support, you know, I, I actually think one video I'd like to do at some point is make a list of, maybe around my anniversary, of all the bands that I've had sort of like a personal relationship with. Some local, of course, but not some not, obviously many not local. That like the people from like the Neil from Dirt Poor Robbins or Josh Benash from Kiss Kiss and Vuvuzela and his solo stuff or um, uh, or Jeff Zempilla from The Manic Transit. It it just would be good to kind of go over like a shout out. Thanks. I mean, it, I started the blog in two thousand seven. It was started in two thousand six actually, and you know it reached some people. But you know it, that was maybe the most gratifying. You know one of the most gratifying when I would notice some of these artists really uh, happy to see. Uh, someone talking about their music that this is really underground. So even if it only finds five to ten people, that's five or ten people that wouldn't know that, you know, that got to enjoy something that they made. So, um, yeah, I should probably make a video about that, you know, and anyone else in the future, of course. Yeah, yeah like Erland. Erland reached out to me from Giant Sky. Really nice left comments and everything. It's it's great to like music that's smaller that you can actually connect and, and talk to um, the artist about, you know, as opposed to... Uh, some of these artists, well, I'll, I'll never talk to the Rush guys, probably. I mean, it'd be great. I, Getty Lee signed an autograph that was too, it said to Kevin, actually, of all, uh, on this picture thing I had signed years ago. I didn't meet him, but it was uh, uh, this guy who sold music at these shows got to got to see him and got an autograph for me. But, you know, the Rush guys, I don't know if, you know, of course, Neil's not around. But anyway, thank you for watching. Again, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and we'll see you next time.